Hey, good morning, Mortgage Coach community. Dave Savage here, coming to you live out of San Diego, California. I am personally at the Total Expert Accelerate Symposium. It's, a, I think, a five or six city tour that they're doing, uh, a think tank event where, you know, executives from top mortgage companies all over the country are just getting together to mastermind, you know, talk about marketing, technology, leadership advice in 2020 and beyond. So I have Scott Nicholson, who has agreed to be the leader of today's call. What's up, Scott? Good morning. I am excited. Juiced. I get that last minute call, but I'm pumped to do it. Let's go. Yeah. No, I, I, I just decided, you know, I was going to do this call and lead it from here. But then I'm like, you know what? I'm at this think tank. There's all these amazing people. I should really just focus on learning, being present and getting as much value. So Scott, thanks for jumping in last minute. Yeah. Um, before I hand the keys off to you, brother, uh, a, couple, a couple things I wanted to ask the mortgage coach community about and ask you guys to do is, I think our Facebook group just has tremendous value. You know, I'm really proud of the community that we have, of uh, the quality of people that participate in that community, the questions that are asked, the answers that are provided. Uh, it's a great community, and we are a little less than 10 people short of hitting the 8,000 mark, big milestone. So, so guys, um, ask anybody on this group right now. We could literally hit that milestone by the end of the call. You know, whether you're on a mobile app or you're on your desktop, you can invite people to the group. So if you know some um, progressive, success-oriented elite mortgage professionals or want to be elite mortgage professionals, invite them to the group. I mean, literally, you know, this is one of those things where multitask, use the invite link on your mobile phone. It should be right at the top of the middle. If you're looking at this on your desktop, it'll be kind of over in the right middle of the page. There'll be a place where you can invite someone. Um, let's, let's grow this group to heck over 10,000 people um, and just create as much impact and value as we can in the business together. So with, with that said, um, Scott is going to focus on his playbook for 2020 when it comes to purchase business and realtors. So Scott, I'm going to hand it off to you, brother, and let you uh, rock it out. And I can't wait to see the recording. Yeah. Okay. I appreciate it. I will not crash the car, so I'll be gentle. We'll, you know, we might do smoke the tires a little bit, but we'll have some fun. <laughs> have fun and bring some value. And okay. everybody, if you do have questions for Scott, Put them in com comments down below. Marcy is going to be moderating and looking for any questions that you guys have. So, you know, comments below, whether you're in Zoom, use chat. And if you're in Facebook, use comments. Take it easy, everybody. Have fun. See you, Scott. Yeah, see you. Thanks, buddy. Yep. You too. Um, okay. So now that dad has left, so we can have some fun, turn the music up and maybe get the keg going and let's go. So, before I jump into this, let's go back to Dave's. Marcy, are you, are you with me or are you riding shotgun with me? I am riding shotgun with you. Okay. Um, okay. And um, man, how's that? For, right out of the gate, daughter's already calling. So there you go. Turn that off. And so before I jump into this, so let's, let's talk about growing the group. I think it's critical like managers, branch managers, area that if you're members in here, I didn't realize you could just instantly just bring people in. I encourage you to do that because I'm not a big social media guy, maybe because I'm over 50 and whatever, but I, I, I love social media with the aspect of groups. And so with that said, I think all the managers or someone in, you know, if you're a branch manager or whatever is to get your core your originators into the uh, groups like this because there's a lot of knowledge being shared by very, very good originators in this group. So I think I encourage you to add those LOs because they're going to learn a lot. I know um, coming into the business, this, I mean, there was no such thing as social media. You just kind of, Tommy Bass brought me in. I was kind of on my own, so to speak. So I think someone who's new to this business, I encourage you to jump into a group like this. There's a couple of good groups out there. Jump in because your, your uh, learning curve is going to be greatly diminished. So it's going to help you. So uh, that's one. Number two, Denise Donahue did a really good interview. I encourage you to watch that. And she said something and someone made the comment again. She said this before, but someone picked it up. Um, 
she runs local agent groups. I think that's critical in Facebook is to pull your core people based on the strategies and what you're doing. Um, it's a first time home buyer or a down payment, whatever you do, doesn't matter, but I encourage you to build your own little real estate groups. And I think the content I'm gonna give you um, is gonna fit perfectly with that. So um, build your little Facebook groups, bring your agents in and go from there. So now let's go to um, 2020. And so I got the call late um, going, hey, I need your help, you know? And I go, man, am I the last guy on the sheet to call in? But I'll do it, let's jump in um, and work on some purchase money. So I'm gonna show you some things I'm personally doing um, that I can help you with growing. And here's what's really cool about this, we'll talk about. Um, this will help the new loan officer that does, I don't care if you're not doing any or one unit, and plus it could help a massive producing team um, regain market share or continue to get bigger. So this is not dove tailored to just a massive educated 20 year producer. This could go for someone brand new in the business to someone who's been in the business forever and just absolutely killing it. And so it's gonna cover the spectrum in there. And so with that, um, let me, I asked a few questions um, in the group and there I got one, okay, okay, got Boston. So what I wanted to do was make this kind of a live workshop and that's our goal. And so um, I'm gonna pull up some TCAs, I'm gonna work them right there. So just bear with me, I got my pricing already um inside a couple different scenarios i can work i'm going to show you how this will work um and before we get going let's agree on a couple things first number one what from a buyer's perspective right what's the number one issue in today's market let's say top two i should say number one's affordability and that's either do I want to have that payment and or can I qualify with that payment? And just this, even though the rates are really, really good, we can still get even lower. And we'll talk about that in a second. So it's affordability is number one and the lack of working capital, either not having enough. So they think that they can't jump in the market. So they'd be like a fence setter or number two, um, they're trying to get in, but with the current lender they're working with, let's say a big box or whatever, um, that they're saying, no, based on your credit and your income, your CIAs, you can only afford this. And so they're kind of stuck. And so they're going to be able to get that type of purchase. So we're going to talk about and deal with that. Now, the second thing we're going to work on, what do you think the number one issue is today in real estate? And so for our agents, one is you know, with a big shift of uh, the comp, and I won't get into all that stuff, is if you can get the listing and then market that listing effectively, listings is where it's at. And I'm gonna focus on particular the listing agent because I want inventory. I wanna help you go after the listing agent to help get that inventory for them and or move that inventory for them because as an originator, I wanna walk away from that. One, I got a new agent and or group Two, I've apt the seller in the transaction, meaning I'm going to help them too on their up leg. And then three, I'm going to, um, if I brought into a counter mechanism or a counter with my listing agent on any type of offers coming in, I can help structure that offer and we'll get into that. And so with that, any questions, Marsha's gonna help me because I'm sitting here by myself. Marsha's Marcia, gonna help me with questions, right? Yes, I am. Okay, so just kind of just interrupt me or whatever, but I'll, let's just jump into it. Let me open my mortgage coach and um, let's find a property. So I got one response and I know this is late, sorry. Um, I wanted to know the areas you guys were in because I'm, I'm not gonna play around with my area. I wanna play around with, make it about you guys, I wanna play around with your ear. So I pulled up Boston, right? So I'm gonna go jump into the East Coast. And I'm gonna look around. I like to use Zillow for a couple reasons. So, so now I've just literally jumped in. I've logged into Zillow. I like to look at Zillow. Now I know what the properties are going. I'm gonna research two things. I'm gonna look for a property I can help. And if the property I can help, I'm going to look at the group who has the listing. And if I want to do business with them, that's going to be my first target. So let's look at this. 
So I'm just going to scroll down and here's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing um, 76 days on market. Now, Scott, did you want to share your screen with them? Oh, sorry. That would help, wouldn't it? And we also have Cynthia and she mentioned that she is in Seattle, Washington. Oh, perfect. So I'll pivot to Seattle next, uh, Cynthia. So can you see my screen? We can see your screen. Okay. That would help, right? I'm sitting there just talking to myself. Uh, okay. In Boston. Okay. So now I just logged into Zillow. I'm in, I'm playing around in Boston. Now I'm going to look through some inventory. I mean, so look at, we got some new construction. We're 261 days on market. Um, I got a price cut here of a hundred grand on a condo right there. Um, 48 days, I got another price cut. So let's just jump into them. Let's look at this guy. So this one, we're on 231 days on market. Let's say it's PT Van Burrow is, is my listing agent. And so let's say two things for an example. Um, all right, let's just build this one out right here. Let's just say two things. One, I can help this person. Number two, I want to do business with this person, right? So I've identified the target, identified the group. And the reason I want to do business with them, let's just say, for example, during this, um, is he's got buyer's agents. Because if he's the main guy getting all the listings, getting in front of that lister and the seller, getting the opportunities, um, a lot of times his buyer's agents in his groups are probably struggling um, they're trying to, and he can't provide enough leads to them. So what I'm going to help you guys with is identify a target, which is a property, make sure it's an agent I want to work with. And then we're going to give them a financial solutions and benefits. We'll give them some options. And then four, we're going to help them market the property, right? So it's really that easy. So think of those four things, identify the target. Does the target align with the person I want to work with? Three, figure out the financing options where you can help them. Four, present them with a marketing opportunity and how you can help market this. So let's build this one. So let's do this. 2850, right? Let's put 20% down. It's going to give me a loan amount of 228. Let's go in there. It's my first example. I'm going to go right into product. And so what's interesting about this, this is how I'm going to build this one out on 303 Columbus. He's already price dropped this, right? So we price dropped it last month. So this, I'm going to build it on a TCA and I'm going to call this a post drop. That means he's already done it. And so I'm going to show what I want to go. The goal here is I want to educate PT on what the 50,000 did for the member. So what our issue is uh, affordability. So I want to educate PT on what 50,000 on a price drop did for affordability for that potential buyer, right? So let's go ahead and go, um, okay, let's, let's go this, one. let's do this one, 10, 22, right? And this was his price drop day, right? So I'm just gonna enter that as the first one for right now. What's his sales price? What was this? Uh, it's 50 on that, so let's just go 2.9. Let's just round it up for this one, 2.9. Okay, let's put 20% down. We're gonna do a jumbo interest rate. I do, I did cheat a little bit this morning just to help as far as rates. I got a jumbo 20 pars at 4% for me. Here's what's great about this and think about, I'm gonna pause for a second. Our talk while I'm building too is, that's walking and chewing for me, which is tough. This is great for those who are like, Scott, I can't compete with big box banks out there. Just they're trying to buy it with their private client, private, you know, private banking sector, and they're offering this and you're just giving this stuff away. This gives you the ammunition to get out there and blow the doors off those guys. And so they're really not a concern. And so let's go cost. Let's say his costs are going to be, you know, let's say nine grand, right? Uh, no points. Let's say 15 days of interest. Okay. Uh, that's 105 days of interest. 15 days of interest. Let's just say it's going to go no impounds, but let's just... Put 2,400 in there. Let's say two appraisals, 1,200. Um, okay, monthly insurance. I do know the property tax was one and a half, I think. So 
don't beat me up on, you know, let's say closing costs, hey, your closing costs are maybe $500 short or, you know, the, the intro or whatever. Your, the point is the principle how we're doing this, if that makes sense. So what I just did is I built my first column. And so let me, I'm gonna to toggle back and forth between this. And so I built my first column. So in this first column, let me turn the current off. Um, so in the first column, I wanna show him, you know, this is where he was at, right? Um, and there's three things I'll highlight. Price, uh, monthly payment, cash to close. So now the second column, I wanna show him um, what he did for the $50,000 price drop, right? All right, let's copy that over. Okay, let's take 50 right off the top. Okay, same everything. Now we're gonna add another pro, I'm just gonna go ahead and finish this out now. Uh, where are we at? Uh, yep. Uh, no, wait, no, what am I doing? Hey, let's go. Now I'm gonna do a 50K sell buy on. All right. I need to look at my rates. Oh shoot. I went all the way down to the bottom. That's fine. Okay, I'm gonna get a full price. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see, what's my loan amount? My loan amount's 230, I'm gonna cheat, sorry. I went right down the bottom of my jumbo at two and three quarters was five and a quarter points. I'm gonna move it up slightly. Let's just say it's three and a quarter at three. Okay, there we go. And we did have someone ask, Scott, why yeah. you're using Zillow instead of the MLS or the local realtor association. One, I don't have access to that, right? So Zillow is pretty easy. Zillow gives me, so that's a great question. So Zillow gives me the opportunity to, to search by agent. So I can actually look him up, right? And so, um, let me go, let me go backwards. All right, um, let me just find there. Where's the others? I like to go in here and just look him up um and see what he's doing so he's got third so this is a good one actually he's got 13 active listings and so now i can pop around on his other properties right so 20 days on market um so this would be someone i would be very interested in working with um you know he's got lower price points which we'll dive into in just a second um we're on this one right now by far his biggest one um Actually, probably his days on market are going to go back in here. Let's look at Market Street. You know, look at this. You know, there's an issue right there, and we'll talk about that. This is another type of a seller buy down. I'll show you how that one works. Let me finish this up, though. All right. So let me look at the presentation and where we're at. Okay. First column, 1022, there was his prior to the drop, he dropped, so he was at 29, delivering a payment of 14,901 cash to close. He did the drop, he's basically saving 253 a month. What is that in ratios? 14, 647, uh, he dropped 2% in ratios, right? And then now the buy down, I used the buy down and we took to three and a half for the 50. We now drop 658. So what is that in ratios? 14 to 24. Uh, divided by, uh, 15, 15, 15. Uh, hold on. OK. 
Okay. You know what? For 50K. Okay. So let's now, so now let's go into, now I'm going to show them in the fourth column. So column one, where he was pre-drop. Column two, what he did for the drop. Column three, use the same money, but drop his rate and show him the savings for the same money, how much potential you can have for this. Column four is all you're going to do is reduce price and move it all the way down to um, where it could be. Let me show you a finished product, actually, because I actually kind of screwed this one up because um, I didn't have the middle of my rate sheet done on pricing. So let's move. Actually, I did. Let me do this one right here. This one. Okay. Okay, this is perfect right here. So here's a finished product. So we had, so we had a price. So imagine we're on Zillow. This is the property I pulled up. I pulled up this one, 27,555. So it was at just short of a million five. And I put the 20% down. I think I did this one on Friday. Um, this is what it's looking like. Vitals, you know, payment cash to close. He did a $61,000 price drop. He saved the client $262. I used the same, and I'm in column three now. I took the same amount of money, but I reduced rate, took it to two and three quarters. I saved now 743. Let's look at ratios real quick. 6303 by drop 3%, 4%, 3.5% on the 60 on column two. If he used the buy down with the same amount of money, he's going to take his ratios to. 11%. I mean, that's a huge difference. So think of column three, giving them a fair and full price, taking the same amount of money, and then now reducing ratios 11%. So there's how I directly affect it. So let me just, let me slow down just a little bit. Let's review here. I selected a property. I selected the property because he or she just price reduced it, right? I also looked at the agent. Do I want to engage this one? Is this a high maintenance one I really don't want to deal with that doesn't really, there's lack of trust or whatever reason, or that's in, in the, the person I'm particularly looking for is the listing agent with a team that I can help. And because I'm going to get into the second part here is lead genning. And then the third thing, I'm going to produce a TCA with four columns just like this. Column one was where they were prior to drop. Column two is what they did for the drop and the financial implications or the financial benefits there. They basically, for 61 k they saved the buyer $262. Now in column three, for the same amount of money, I used it in the seller buy-down. Now we saved it $743 a month, which is 11% drop in ratios, right? Column four, all I did was I took normal financing and I dropped the price all the way to where it started to meet and met the exact same savings and payment as the seller write-down. So think about this. This is how the video would go. I would record to this person. Hi, my name is Scott Nicholson. I want to call and reach out to, for you on 120th Street. I want to help you with uh, probably the number one issue in today's market, and that's with affordability. And I want to show you with a particular program I have, it's called the Seller Buy-Down, how I can help you with that in potential buyers. And so in this presentation, I'm going to go from left to right. In the first column, I have where you were prior to the drop. The property was priced at $1.4995. I'm going to select a consumer that has excellent credit. We're doing a jumbo loan. He's putting 20% down. By the way, the Seller Buy-Down, we can use it for any type of product. But I'm just going to go ahead and focus on this one for this example. And what that does for someone buying your property pre-drop with 20 down with excellent credit, that's going to translate into a monthly payment of $65.65 and cash to close at $316,000. Column two, this is your price drop. So when I, what I want to show you here is I'm going to reduce the purchase price by the $61,000. And I want to show you what the, what the financial benefits are to the potential buyer. So I went ahead and took the 61 off here, which I've highlighted for you. Payment's now 6303, and my, cap, and my monthly savings is 262. And so now the third column is here's what I want to help you with. And there's two things um, we have to get, uh, or actually one particular thing is 
we're gonna get the buyer, and I'll help you counter any buyers that come in, we're gonna get a fair and full price. As long as the property can appraise for a million four ninety nine five hundred, this is how we would structure it and help a seller buy down. So column three, 1.4995. We would then, I would structure a seller buy down of 61,000 in the purchase contract. We would offer them same 20% down. The rate will be today, would be two, two and three quarters on a jumbo 30 year fix, which translates to a payment of 58,2199, which is a reduction in monthly payment of $343 per month for the life of the loan. That's an 11% drop in ratio. So let me put this in simple terms for you. In the fourth column, you would have to reduce price to a million three thirty to have the same financial benefits monthly and month, monthly payment and monthly savings. And so now what I wanna show you is I'm gonna do a second video for you and I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna start at the price that where we're at now, million four thirty eight five hundred. And then I'm gonna structure a seller buy down. We're gonna send this to market so I can help you with any offers that come in and educate anybody who's came and looked at your property that we can bring that a million three thirty buyer up into your property. It'd be something like that. And that's how I'd produce the initial TCA to that agent, right? I'm going to call them. I'm going to text the link into them. And then I'm gonna have a number set up to where they can go ahead and they're gonna go and so for an example, everyone pick up their phones right now and we're gonna go ahead and say, hey Scott, I love this, but give me more information on this seller buy down. I would say, great, go ahead and pick up your phone right now and to number 714-477-7425. There's that number I want you to text. So text Scott, SBD. So there it is right there, I've set it up. So Scott, SBD, and I'm going to deliver the information on the seller buy down to that listing agent because every time I call, they want more information on it. And I deliver them to my seller buy down site, right? And I give them all of the stuff. There's the FAQs, they can dig into all that stuff, how it works, yada, yada, and all that. So now what I've done, I've just given you the playbook and how to target agents in your marketplace. So let's jump back into Boston right now. Let's jump back into PT. And so, and so let me pause for a second because I'm just, I'm not in the flow just yet because I'm kind of rambling a little bit. Let me back up and make sure everyone kind of understand what I just happened right there and what I did. So is there any questions? I have a couple of different cities and states, okay. uh, but no other questions. I have uh, Roberta who says that she's in the Davenport, Iowa area, okay. and Kathy Karens who is in the Silver Spring, Maryland area. Okay, so let's do this. So you got the jumbo, right? And so this is what the finished product looked like. And so you're the so when, when the agent you want to target has done the price drop, you're going to do a post drop TCA. Column one is where they were. Column two is what they did, the financial implications. Column three is for the same amount of money, how much you, what you can benefit the potential client. Column four, you're speaking realtor here and you're speaking price drop. Realtors understand price drop and they don't understand all the fancy jargon, all the stuff we talk about. This is all um, Miller, what's his name? Donald Miller. Um, you gotta kind of speak their language and simple it down. And that's why I've added the fourth column and basically saying you would have to reduce price to 1.330 in order to have the same financial benefits there. And you can think about that for a second and you can craft your own video and message, but really what you want to talk to them about is how many buyers are sitting down at the 1.3? A lot. How many buyers are probably sitting there and it says, yeah, 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 hon, I don't know. I don't know about a 65, 65 monthly payment. I can kind of keep it under that six grand. I'm in business. But, you know, so how many fence setters do they not realize that are sitting there? Um, this is really important information. It gets to the heart of the matter. And, and that's why I said, 
I don't care if you're one day into this business and you do one loan a month or you're in a massive team like Jeremy and Josh and all those big guys doing just crazy numbers. It can help from anybody in between those. Um, it just if you open up Zillow, find your targets, build your TCA, but that's only half the battle. But once you've done it, they go, that's awesome, Scott. So now what? And so now what you do is that's the whole, and that's the whole seller buy down. So I then, I then, my site always goes out. So I copy my link. I'll text them my link on that more information. And then what I get into, I'll actually have them text another number in there. So if you guys were on that same number, for an example, if you were to text me capital N 120th street, I'm going to deliver that TCA there for them. So there's, there's, so what we're going to finish this out on is you've educated them. You've dealt with real life solutions in today's market and you can do it on any product. I don't care what you specialize in. You can do it on anything. And I'm choosing the hardest loans because those are the ones that get shopped the most, the conventional, conventional high balance and jumbo, right? Um, and those are the ones that most of the banks are reducing margin just to stay competitive. You don't need to do that. And so now the second part to the equation now is taking it to market. Well, how do you take it to market? There's your social media campaigns where you take a picture of the house and put in your, your, your keyword for this house is approved for whatever you want to, you know, run it through compliance, whatever you want to do. There's your yard signs. And so now, and I'll get into that in just a minute. And so it's a one-two punch. That's awesome that you got the point and that's awesome you delivered the value. Now finish the deal. Now go out there and lead Jen to the consumer. Um, let's, let's focus on a smaller price property because I get this all the time. And we do have a couple of more questions that have come in. Oh, yeah. um, we have Rainier who's asking, how does the agent write the contract for the seller buy down? Mm -hmm. And we have Chris McWilliams who's asking, aren't you concerned that your buyers might be overpaying for the home with the seller buy down? Yep. So let's go. First question is contract. Contracts is critical. It's everything. And I've told a few people recently that I have not divulged this information too readily for the mortgage coach community. Sorry. Um, it's something I've kind of held back kind of the secret a little bit is if you write it in the purchase contract, let's just say it's the 61,000, right? Um, let's say it's the 61. So is seller agrees for to pay 61 or uh, seller concession used for buyer's discount points. As long as you identify in the contract that the concession is used for buyer's discount points, and then that those discount points or that concession in particular, let's say it's a 61,000, can be eliminated from your predatory or high cost lending. And so if you don't do that, and then they're going to include it, and you're going to get kicked out in the ninth inning saying, basically, you have triggers or alarms that are having that's gone off, that you've triggered, you know, APR, high cost, all of that, you're done. So the key is get it in your contract that the seller's paying for this buyer's discount points, right? The concessions used for, if you get, there's a million different ways you could say it. As long as it's there, they're going to refer to that purchase contract. And if it's stated in there, it's going to be eliminated. If you don't, rule of thumb, I've always said it's 3% of the loan amount. If you keep the cost under 3%, so if you're doing a small seller buy down, it's not that big of a deal. If you're doing a larger one, you have to state it in the purchase contract and structure it correctly. That way it can be eliminated. And if you don't, what I mean by the 3%, say the loan's a million dollars, 3%, 30K, all fees above that 30K are going to have to um, either do a PE, you're going to have to restructure the whole deal. So that's the first question. Number two, what was the second one? Oh, overpaying. Overpaying. Yep. So two questions, two automatic questions that come out of my mouth every single time. Number one, let's say, or Marcy, you're my listing agent. Marcy, what is, let's just say it's here on the North 20th street. What is our fair value meaning from a lender's perspective? Where are my comps at? I want to know that 1.4995, I have comps, we can get an appraisal because 
my if if we don't you're just wasting we're wasting everyone's time right here i cannot basically take a property and just lump on a seller buy down to it i need to know where my comps are at first so i can get an appraisal and nine times out of ten they're there and what's happening in today's market even the low rate environment is because it's sitting is their natural inclination is to go ahead and price drop it to move it and we just showed you right here in column two a sixty-one thousand dollar price drop basically saved the guy what four three or four percent whatever it is three percent he saved him two hundred and sixty two dollars you're not doing a buyer any service for sixty one thousand and that's what the whole point of this initial tca is to show them it's a polite way of saying god your price drop just stinks you're doing nothing because in one this is what your financial values are two this is where your 61 did 262 a month column three i can actually almost triple that or double that more than double that i can get to 743 amount with the same money and take ratios down to 11 percent and so now my first question is where's value number two how much money do i have to work with and that's directly dealing with the net sheet and so the response is with scott I have comps all day long at a million five supporting this. Okay, good. How much do I get to work with? I don't know. Usually the response goes, I don't know, Scott, you tell me. I go, all right, well, let me ask, let me ask another question. Is how much, because your days on market are starting to add up, what was your next price drop move? I was gonna probably reduce it by another 60,000. Okay, then that tells me I have value, I'm, I'm in the game, Number two, I know what can work with. And I can do two things with that, with that 60,000 when they tell me that. Either I can go ahead and use it all in this scenario I did, because that's what they did, price drop. Now moving forward, I can do a small T or seller buy down, let's say for, for 20,000, right? That 20,000 seller buy down will have the same impact as a 60,000 price reduction. So it's really important you get those two questions. Where's my comps? So I'm not going to play with a listing agent that their only goal was to say, oh my God, your house is worth one eight easy. Get the listing and price negotiate and got a fair price just because the jumbo market or any type of market dealing with affordability, their moves are to price drop. I want to stop that. I want to jump in. So here's the thing is now what you should do on your TCA, let me show you something here. And so this goes to the second question. Let's just reinvest that, what is it? Seven, oh, it's like 743 or something like that, All right? Dave's in the way there. Oh, shoot, the little screen's in the way. All right, let's take a look at that. Hey, look what I did. See, I reinvested that. Look at the savings over 60 months. Look at the orange graph right there. That's ridiculous. That's $70,000 versus if you want to take the 61 off price, great. That's a $9,000 savings for you. I get it. Here's the thing. If you're paying cash, absolutely attack price. But in a purchase situation, if we have value, right, you can still get a good price and still get the seller buy down negotiated in there. That's part of your job. You're going to help negotiations. You're in between the middle of the two. You're the guy. You're the Donald Miller guy. You're making that listing agent the hero. So what I did was I added the money back in. So you tell me. Or actually, I can go a little bit less. Let me do this. Um, 6301, let me take, let's say, what is it? 2263, that's actually not a fair. So that's actually not a fair assessment by me. Let me take $261 off, right? 234 minus 261, because that's not fair. Um, let me go here, where are we? You see what I'm doing here, guys? So I'm gonna go ahead and make the, the, the lower sales price and the seller buy down be pretty much equal. Then let's look at what the numbers say. Does that make sense? And close enough. So now look at this, look at the difference in here. I don't know why the, did it move? 
And this is this is critical here. So hey, Todd, this is the second example. So what do you sorry? And so now my payments are identical. Do you take it off price or do you take it in the sorry, you take it on financing? And so if you took it on financing, the savings over 60 months is 68 grand. If you took it on price, the savings is 9K. And so imagine I saw some comments fly around about how do I bring in a financial planner and advisor in here? Why not negotiate the seller buy down, save them the 473 a month, you know, the difference between buy down and price, and then go take the 473 and invest it. Or you can go ahead in this case, I just went ahead equal payments. And then because the interest rate is so low, I'm putting more into that. Look at the interest paid in 15 years. Column three is gonna pay 384. Column two is paying 562. You flip it around and you say, all right, let's just see what his principal is going to look like. Look at the principal he's paying in those 15 years. He's paying $583. So think of this to answer the second question is if the property appraises at a million five, let's say, what do I go after price or rate? You tell me. So in, so think about this, you can even lower it by paying less interest and then you're paying more principal to it. So he's building his equity position. So let's say he stays in here 10 years, right? He stays in there 10 years. Let me see, let me adjust, or let's say 15 years, they're actually getting longer. So he stays there, he's gonna build $171,000 just by structuring his financing correctly. Does that make sense? Guys, this is a huge deal right now. And probably the number one question I get, hey Scott, rates are low, really good? Oh, you tell me. Rates are really good at three and seven eighths, but rates are phenomenal at two and three quarters. And just look at the numbers. I got my number of my payments matching right there. But let's say this guy loves that house and he's only a pre-approved with his bank at a million three thirty, and he has no more income to generate. How do I get up into there? Well, number three is how you do it. Um, I'm going to take that back out. Um, so questions on that. I'm going to jump into the Seattle market. I'm going to do two things. I'm going to jump into a different market. How are we doing? Man, this is moving fast around here. Uh, <laughs> and we do have a couple of questions that have come in. Yeah. We have um, Cynthia asking if the seller receives a tax benefit in paying for the buyer's closing cost. Do you know that answer? That is a CPA question. That's my right. first response. That's Number perfect. two, I don't quote me on it, but they're going to lower their tax basis. Right? And then we have um, Greg asking if um, he's limited to a 3% seller concession. No. And we have... Um, Brandon that's asking why the 3% cap if bona fide discount is excluded from the HPML? No, 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 no. So let's, 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 let's go back, right? So let's go back and it's a great point. First of all, know your products, your products and the LTVs will dictate how much concession you get, right? For an example, I'll give you a, a, a detail. Wells Jumbo, the max concession is 6% of sales price. Sales price. So it's a million dollar house, the most you can get is 60K, right? But if your rate sheet goes all the way down to 6% cost to get whatever, two and a half percent, six, that's on your loan amount. So if he's putting 20% down, it's a loan amount of 800,000, 6% is 48K. You're underneath that. But if you were to do it structured on a chase, based on LTV, they actually go to 9% if you're at 75 or less LTV. So one, know your product, um, you know, get into conventional, get into, you know, VA, you get into non-owner occupied, obviously it's 2%. So one, know your product. Now let's get into the 3%. Your general compliance for banks are all, all of ours banks is the general rule of thumb. When I work with compliance, back that you know I wanted to get all my stuff organized was she told me my compliance officer said Scott the general rule of thumb is your all your costs associated to the loan exceed three percent then you're gonna have problems just try to keep it under three percent right with no forget the seller buy down for right now that's just a general rule of thumb and a general day-to-day -day operation now let's go to the seller buy down so if your purchase contract is structured correctly and you have 
seller concession being used for di bona fide discount points or just dis seller belt buyers discount points, then those don't count, right? Then they're excluded from the calculations. And so now it's like, can you keep your bank title escrow and all your, your normal costs under 3%? Hell yeah, you should. Um, and then off you go. So just really important you get it under the purchase contract. Let me jump into, I wanna do two things. I wanna go into a different market. So Boston, before I leave, I mean, that's how you target an agent. PT's got some inventory. So this would be a great one to go after. Um, he's got inventory to look at. Um, he just price cut this one. And so I don't know the max, I'm gonna say the max county limits. Let me give you another tidbit. Where the pressure lies in the market is 10% over the max county limits. So if you're in a, in, there's no high balance in your area and your Fannie Mae limits go to 44, add 10% to that, we'll call it the 530 range. Everything around 530 and higher, that's where it's starting to wobble. And it's wobbling because that consumer can't get into the jumbo because of the, the tighter box of qualifications, reserves and such. The, the consumer has to stay in the conforming limits, right? But they've ran out of money. They can't go more than 10% down. That's, they've maxed that out. That's why at 10% of your county limit, so let's just say this for an example. I'm gonna go on a limb and say, Boston has a high balance, I'm sure they do, and I think their loan, loan limits are gonna be 726. So add 10% to that, you're in that 850, 860 range. He's now, he's now anything above, above this, now there's where the properties start to waver. Um, now you can bring in your jumbo 10% down, um, do your strategies from that, which I have. Um, so that's a rule of thumb. Look at your properties at 10% over your max county limits. Um, let me bump, jump over into Seattle. Hold on. One second. Questions? I'm hoping you guys understand this because this is just absolutely critical to your business. And it's so easy to do, it's ridiculous. Seattle, Washington, here we go. Let's see what we got. Okay, I'm gonna go high to low. Um, let's pop around. Whoa, Nelly, 491 days on market. Look at these, Five. wow. That's probably the largest price cut I've ever seen, half million. Let's get out. I mean, you can play in this if you want. This, I mean, this, this space is just in uncharted waters right here for everybody. Look at the days on market. Let's just get into maybe something your bank could more probable for your bank here. Let me just, let me just dive down a little bit deeper. Okay. Let's play in this space. 63 days on market, right? Uh, 30 days, 27 days. Let me get rid of my face, get it out of there, make sure my timing's right. Um, 75 days on market. So 138 days on market. That's a plot, 90 day. Here we go right here. Let's do this one. So we just did a price drop, right? First thing I'm looking at, okay. Let's just say, hmm, see the problem is this estimate that might be a little high. But let's just say, first question, do I have comps at a million two or 2298? Two, two, yes, you do, Scott. How much money do I got? You probably got an under 90. Okay, great. Uh, let's say Shane and Ann, I, I like, I want to do business with their at Compass. Uh, I want to do business with them. And so I'm going to go ahead and build a very simple TCA out of this. And so this is what it would look like. I'm going to drop in column one. I'm going to drop in, wait, hold on. I'm going to drop in column one. Boom. There's where they were pre-drop. Hold on. These little things get in the way. So I'm gonna put, I'm gonna add 90 back onto that. So what is that? I'm gonna add the, the 90 back then 2.3 and some change. That's column one, right? So this is whoever's in Seattle. Column one was before drop. Column two was the 90K drop. Column three, go ahead and do your math quickly. Put your seller buy down there, figure out the rate, what's gonna cost you, get it down there, and you're gonna show them. 
The ratios are ridiculous when you look at what 90K is going to do, what 90K does on financing, and then here's the close. You're going to reduce your price all the way down until your payments match, until your savings and payments match, right? And so when you do that, the what's really gonna go, oh, that's cute, that's nice, Scott, I love it. Whoa, whoa wait a second. So, yeah, I mean, wait a minute, I had to reduce price by 270,000 to get, yeah, you did. And so that's the eye opener, that fourth column. And then now start planting the seed like, gosh, how many guys can we get? And uh, are people, consumers, can we get? How do we market this differently? And then you unveil, how do you market this? Great. We can get sign writers out there. I can assign you a number that when, when the buyer or the buyer's agents call or text in, I can deliver the custom TCA report that you've already viewed. And we can deliver that out there and we can get full and fair price offers in there. We're not gonna overpay in the market, but we're not gonna give the property away at a million 330, right? And so one, I understand the question is you don't wanna overpay. And that's why I always lead with the first question, where's my comps, right? And you can start there. As long as you're underneath that, you're, you're good to go. Then you can negotiate. And that's where you want to be as a law officer is because now you're dealing with affordability issues. You're dealing with the lack of capital. I'm running out of time. And just so you know, I'm doing a webinar this Thursday. Um, and I'll have more stuff prepared. And maybe I'll pull some more people aside and give me exact names, not markets. And we can dive in because, I mean, we just, we're in Seattle. I mean, these, these things are deep. Well, let's look at, let's look at what these guys do. Um, hold on a second. And I'm going to do a webinar this Thursday morning. So, and I'll post the Zoom link um, invite to you guys uh, after this call. Where am I at? I'm in Zillow. I want to look up this team. So let's just say this is the agent or group I want to look at. Um, okay, uh, get three. I mean, whatever you want to do. Probably would, I would, whatever. If you know them, great, you can come in and help them. They've done quite a bit. So you can come in and, and bring it in there. So, so let me, let me, uh, let me, let me review and then let me show you how you market to them. Um, questions. RC questions. Um, let's see. I don't have any questions right now. Okay. So we, so there's our, there's our Seattle market. Let's just keep looking in the Seattle and you can go right in the Midwest. You can go everywhere. Let's dive down a little bit. Let's dive down in Seattle. Um, let's go into the, okay. new construction price cut 51, 161 days on market, um, price cut 68,000, 96. So what's really powerful is I showed you how I reinvested that and I took this payment right? And I made a match. So remember the one of the questions was, if this comes up is like, Hey, I'd rather actually get my, I'd rather get a discount on price than on get my financing squared away. <laughs> well, look, look at that. I mean, look what we did here. Look at the savings over 60 months. Actually, I moved it back a little bit. Um, this is just your savings. So if I move the payments equal and I reinvested that money, which is I think 461, it was night and day. I think the principal paid, which would be equity over 15 years on rate versus price was 171,000, making the same payment. And so think about the equity position they could actually get by negotiating proper financing in the purchase contract than going after rate or uh, price. And, and we have someone asking if you use several investors for the seller buy down. I use everything on my rate sheet. And so I use, so, let me, let me explain just a couple things where you guys, a couple things, and I'll go into more detail on Thursday, is I use it for non-QM. Non-QM, guys, is a huge opportunity for you 
that's taking your business owner, you know, we all know that, that person, and we have that person. It just doesn't show enough income. We have a great product. Whatever product you have in non-QM, there's great outlets for that now. The problem is what when you get into non-QM? The rates stink. And not only that, for owners, some owners or managers of your bank, just an early payoff because the rate's high, they're going to try to get out of that thing as quickly as they can. And so everything I'm doing non-QM wise, that's a product I'm really focusing on is offering that product either be, let's just say it's a, it's a $2 million property and I want to do a 10% down non-QM with FICOs at 690. I can do it. My rate's at seven and a half or higher but I can negotiate a seller buy down there and bring that thing down to like four and three quarters. The swings are massive in, in payment, in, in ratios and afford or really affordability, right? Um, not only that, he's going to stay in that loan longer because we're at four and three quarters versus having an early payoff demand and or I can get his tax returns cleaned up in the next few years and rates are kind of hanging in there. I can do a rate and term, but we're a lot better shaped in there for right now. Now we can get into that property. Um, so, um, I can use, we can use it on FHA, we can use it on conventional, we can, so I use whatever I have at your own disposable. So this is not something I have privy to that you don't, everyone's going to be different. Just use your jumbo, look at your jumbo, look at your conventional, look at your FHA, whatever you do, you have all that ready. Just look at the rate sheets, um, and where you can be creative with that. And I'll go into detail on how we look at different product. And one of the things too, and I don't give, I don't have much time, is what's critical is I'll take a lower price point, let's say seven hundred thousand or five hundred thousand or three hundred thousand, and when I get into those price ranges, that's when I start to tack. Let's say par today is three point nine nine on a conventional ninety five, and for a few discount points, I can get it under, I can get it at four three seven or three six, right, just for a little bit. And the reason I do that is I want to get it under market so I'm not rate shopped. But then what I do for the remainder of the money, hold on, what I do for the remainder of the money and I structure it, I do my single premium buyout. And so now when they look at buying a house at 95, you know, 95 LTV, this is what it's going to look like with 3.99 and a line item PMI. Now for X amount of dollars, let's say five or six or seven thousand dollars in a seller buy down structured correctly. Now I have below market and no mortgage insurance. And that mortgage insurance, when that payment's excluded, that's a huge deal on ratios. That's a massive deal. And so now you're helping people get into those lower price points that they didn't think they could before. And so um, again, I'm just gonna review because I only got a few minutes. Is for purchase money moving the corner, this is really kind of a sniper, uh, that's a bad word. That's just really kind of a singled out, the person I want to do with approach, right? That's my market. That's my agent and team. There's the distress. There's what they're trying to do to move property. I'm going to jump in. I'm going to show them how to get it done. I'm going to show them the TCA. They dropped it in those four columns. I'm going to record the second video on the seller buy down. I'm going to pick up the phone and actually call them going, hey, Stacy, I am calling you. All right, I have feedback. Uh, I'm, you call them, right, and talk the property first. Then you text them the TCA. Then you text them in the seller buy down communities. One of the things you get in the seller buy down group, not only your own page based on your city, like Boston or Seattle, and then that link will go over them with more informa or information on how the product works, your FAQs, all your stuff. But not only that, you're going to get the call text platform. What's really critical about that is now you have the second half. Now you can take your marketing and take it to the market. Now you're lead genning for the listing agent. You're helping their own buyer's agents run their open houses and then drive buyers into that. And every time they call or text, you now got their information. But more importantly, you're delivering the solutions to help them out to market. I don't care what product you do in what market you're in by helping your agents with financial solutions and then taking it to market and helping them lead gen is really a plug and play. And that's kind of what we've done in the seller buy down community. And so Thursday, I'm going to put the link in. 
I'm going to dive into a lot of that stuff. I'm going to be a little bit more prepared. I apologize. Um, and I'm going to get into lower ones. I'm going to do ones with less down. I'm going to do non-QM. I'm going to show you how to take it and move it into market. So I'm going to end it there. And if you had a couple questions, I have probably a minute or two to answer. So we did have a question come in from Kathleen. Um, she is mentioning that she's had lenders tell her that the seller contribution cannot exceed 3%, even if it's written into the contract as the seller paying 4% for the buyer's discount points. Not true. So, so basically her own lender, right, right, her bank is saying you cannot exceed 3%, right? Right. So if she emails me, if she emails me or messages me, let's just say message me, I'll forward you information because a lot of times compliance attorneys will actually refer to others in the industry and say, how are you ruling this? And so I can send over some information for her on that. Um, when it's stated in the purchase contract that the seller's paying for uh, the buyer's discount points, that can be excluded. Is that something you can share in our Facebook post? Uh, I'm going to pull up emails. So what I personally did, and this is maybe good practice for all of you out there, sit down with your own compliance team and go over it. Okay, this is what I'm going to do. This is how I'm going to structure it. You know, so let's look through all the scenarios. And they say, yeah, if it's written in the purchase contract, then you can do it. I even got a general rule of thumb. There's my 3% general rule of thumb. So they're treating that as if they're treating that, that the seller, it, because the concessions being directly applied to discount points, they're not eliminating that. They're just putting a blanket on that. And so I'll forward her some emails uh, from my compliance, but I actually have, and I'll, maybe that'll help her. But here's the thing, if your bank just sit, sits on there and says no, I encourage them to, and you can encourage them to, so can you go check with other compliance at other banks? Um, and I can help her with that, if that makes sense. Great. Okay, so I'll post the link for the meeting on Thursday. Uh, it's 10 a.m., can, you can jump into that. Also, um, yeah. And then any questions you can shoot me and I'll put some uh, videos, I'll put some examples in this post in the community and then you can reach me, you can private message me or email me and we'll go from there. Great. Thank you so much for everything today, Scott. It's been a pleasure. Sorry, I hope I didn't crash the car. I left some gas in it for Dave to drive. When he <laughs> All right, guys. Have a great afternoon. Okay. Okay, bye. Bye-bye.